Hey everyone, welcome to Benoit Obey. So today we're going to do a little comparison, an overview of the new 1000 watt inverter for the 18 volt system of Obey. So in the past we already did the 150 uh, watt, which is a great little one there. I show you a couple of things that you can run with it. And then uh, we tested the 800 watt inverter which I show you that I could pretty much run half of my fish room with it. So I needed to have a second one. And then uh, what happened is I was at Zurich Tool Canada this week and they end up having the 1000 watt on sale. This one here, which looks like it's very similar than the 800 watt. So we're going to open the box, look it up and then uh, you know see if there's any difference in the 800 watt and 1000 watt other than like you know the 200 watt difference there but for all the port are they all the same do you connect everything the same i don't know so we're going to open the box check it out and then uh yeah we'll find out what this little baby can do <laughs> so in the box the first thing that we're going to find is the battery pumps which the battery clamps are the exact same one that you can find into the 800 watt one. Next thing you're going to find, those are just the bracket to mount it. So those are those little bracket here at the bottom that you just uh, you can flip here, there's a little notch on each side. So if you face this towards the, in the center of the tool, put the bracket here and then you just do a quarter turn and now they're lock in place. So you get four brackets like this and you can mount it on the wall. The next thing we have is the car adapter. So you have your car adapter here um, and then in all the car adapters you probably already know that but in all the car adapters you can uh, unscrew the tip here and usually if you do that then you're going to find a fuse that you can replace and then you should have the numbers that are on there so you can uh, replace it. So this one, I don't know if you see that on camera, but that's a 6G12A. And this will be the, the size of the fuse that you need for this. So it's uh, rated for 250 watt. So you just put this back in here. Oh, get this reverse here. So anyway, that little pin just goes in. Here and that's what makes the contact with the top of the fuse and just slide on top of the fuse here. This is usually spring loaded for the bottom of the fuse. So now you just screw it back on. So if something happens and all of a sudden it doesn't work, if you're trying to use the car adapter, that's 90% of the time this is going to be your fuse that's blown. And then this here just plug into the side, but we're going to see that in a second. So now we can take this part of the box out. So in here, only the thing that you're going to find is the instruction. I'm going to put that aside right now. And now we have the unit itself. And as far as I know, yeah, there's nothing else in the box. There's a little box in the back there, but it's just so that uh, if it bangs around, it, it absorbs the shock for the tool. So this is actually all bubble wrap here to protect the tool pretty good. So here it is. Tells you right there if you plug it to your car, 1000 watt, 18 volt battery, 300 watt, and 12 watt. Uh, 12 volt will give you 120 watt which if we put them side by side 
So the one thing that I noticed right away for the, the comparison between the 800 watt and the 1000 watt is actually the fan I've been upgraded. So it is pretty hard to see in here, but the, the fans are 12 volt and then there's they're, uh, 0 0.06 amp. And uh, compared to the 1000 watt that I've been upgraded, uh, you can see that the part number are different, but this one are also 12 volt, but they're uh, 0 0.16 amp. So they're actually uh, 0.10 of an amp higher rating so that's probably going to give you more power for the fans there so more power for the fan means yeah it's going to use a little bit more power for the unit itself not that much but it's actually going to spin the fan faster which in theory will cool down the unit leaving it cold for a longer period of time so you could probably run this one continuously for longer than the old version. By the way, if we need the part number here, the, so the part number or model number for the 800 watt is a RYI 8030AVNM. While the 1000 watt one is a RYI1030 AVNM. So both units are exactly the same height. If we put them one in front of the other here, they're exactly the same width as well. Now if we compare them on the side here, Looks like everything is the same here. Same port for the battery. Uh, there's not any special port for the high input battery or the HP battery. Okay, so now the top, the stud are exactly the same. We look at front now so her 800 watt is on top her thousand watt is at the bottom so it looks like they use everything exactly the same on the outside so we have those two 180 uh, uh, 120 volt plug and then uh, we have the two uh, USB plug here they're both uh, the 5 volt 2.4 amp and then we have the USB-C which is uh, 20 watt and it's also 20 watt here and then we have the uh, car adapter well this is actually to charge if you have like a car adapter charge your phone or something like that there I uh, can plug it in here, or I guess you call them right now like those auxiliary plug. That's what they're called most of the time. So this is the exact same here. So, and then the vent for the airflow looks like uh, they changed it a little bit actually. They raised this a tiny bit higher here, which actually is giving you the the more space for the airflow so that's a big bonus here okay and uh, as for power here you get the exact same watts uh, across the board for if you plug it into your car adapter if you use an 18 volt battery it just if you use a lead acid car battery or truck battery or your boat battery and this one is going to produce a thousand watt compared to 800 watt so we're going to put this one aside now and then, uh, we're just going to just in case of that's the first time that you actually see one of those getting open so your uh, car adapter here plugs right in here there's only one way to plug it because it's flat at the bottom but uh, half circle at the top here so you cannot plug this plug upside down. So it's always going to be plugged properly for you. And then you'll plug the other end in your car. 
So now if we plug in the battery, it's nice and solid here. It won't go nowhere, it doesn't move. And then if you wanna plug in directly to a car battery, so you have your black terminal and your red terminal, which is negative and positive. And uh, even if you would lose the cap here, uh, the color is also on the bottom here. So you would still know, even if this is removed, that this is the plus. And they're also right that the, it is the plus here. And then the connectors are very easy to connect here. So those are just uh, open, the connectors are just open halfway. So you don't have to unscrew this all the way. You can just unscrew it partially and you slide it in and then you just tighten it. And you make sure it's nice and solid. And then you also do the same thing with your negative terminal. Your car, if you would plug it into your car, are also going to have the red and black for positive and negative. And then you, you just clamp it to your battery post. Now, so I get the six amp power battery, it's an HP. Uh, for this, it doesn't matter if you use HP or not, because there's no port for it. Okay, so the neat thing about those things here, we saw it in the other video that I did, but I wasn't as, uh, fluent with the unit there so first thing you're going to do is you have to power up the unit so you hold the button for a few seconds and now it powers up if you want the flashlight you can now use the flashlight on and off so now there's a sticker on top of this here that we can uh, remove later but if it's just showing you that if the button here is green everything is working normal if the button is yellow and flashing, that means that your battery that you're connected to is starting to be low. And if it's flashing red, then it means that uh, you're overloading the unit. You're asking it to run something that is way more powerful that it can handle. Uh, when you plug the battery or any function in here, the light is going to light up accordingly. So now we're on the 18 volt battery. So a uh, unit detects that it's a 300 watt and is detected that we have, we're connected to the battery. It also have a little battery symbol here. Let's, uh, let's remove this plastic here. It shows you uh, what your battery status is here. So our battery is full. It's actually on the, on the battery, on the 18 volt battery. Uh, the plug are activated and it's 20.6 uh, volt that this battery is holding right now. Now the neat thing that you can do with this unit, it's uh, if you hold this button for a little bit, a few seconds, oh, no, I just shut it off. Okay, actually, if you just click on it really quick, <laughs> don't hold it, you hold it, it shuts off. Okay, if you click on it really quick, now it says uh, zero VV, but it's actually trying to say W. So now it's gonna tell you when you have stuff plugged in here or any port, it's gonna tell you how many watt it's actually pulling out of there. So let's do a quick test here. So now I just plugged in one of those uh, little lights here that, uh, you know, make some lights and stuff spinning around in here. It takes a second before it starts spinning around. It's like a little tornado lamp or whatever you want to call it, right? So I get this going right now. And then we can see on the unit that this actually just using five watt. Uh, to run this little thing here. So it's not using that much. And then here, if you just go back, like and press quickly, and you can go back from what to your battery voltage. So you can know 
what's the status of your battery if you still have enough charge to do anything but also even if you're in wet here you can see the battery status with the bars here which will be like similar to the bars on the side of the battery that shows you how much there is left in there I just connected something else just to see if I was going to make any difference but uh, we have two plugs connected and uh, we're still just at 5 watt because those little light here uh, they're barely using any power at all now let's say that you have a power outage at home but you still want to play some game with some friends or family well that's not going to work like this so now you can plug in the unit directly into your power inverter make sure it's turned on we'll turn on the unit takes a second to get the fan to go up to speed that's so many watts it's uh, using so about uh, 23 watts and uh, now that, pl that puck is now sliding no problem so now you can play hair hockey with your friends or family during the power outage. Alright, so now that's a great little unit. It's gonna help a lot around the house. And like I said, I need a second one to run the other half of the fish room. So for me, it's gonna be great. But now you have to be realistic with stuff like this, right? Like a thousand watt. Well, you might not be able to run a kettle to make your coffee. Um, most kettle or toaster are going to be about, you know, anywhere from 800 which you could run but 800 is pretty much the minimum that they're going to be and then they can be all the way up to like you know 16 or 1800 watt so you would need a huge inverter to run one of those uh but you know like if it's gonna be lamps uh stuff like little heaters or anything like this uh, you know sometimes you can get like a space heater for example that might be a 500 watt 600 watt so you might be able to run a space heater um, for the rest of the stuff you're going to be able to charge uh, lots of your little electronic device and all this stuff um, most of the thing that you're going to be able to run out there um, usually Depending on your country, but it's usually pretty much law everywhere that you're supposed to have a little sticker in here. So if it's your kettle, it's going to be like underneath your kettle, look it over. And then you're going to see how much, how many volt and how many watts this is going to use. So this one, for example, here we see that it's uh, 120 volts and then it's at 3.5 watts so it gives you an idea like this was like you know something to just do a quick test really quick there but um you'll find a sticker like that on almost everything so on the back of your tv vcr uh, dvd player whatever you have out there like you know you might be able to run a projector with this just look it up see uh, the other thing too is those are all uh, modify shine wave so little electronic that you might run like you you know even if you could run your microwave with this let's say your microwave is just a 800 watt microwave most of them are gonna be a thousand watt 1200 watt uh, if you can run it because your microwave is small enough your microwave is going to hate you for it and it's going to make a racket like a buzzing sound it is going to work uh, it's not really recommended that you're going to run that now uh, if you're in a jam and you really want to you know eat up your pizza pocket or whatever because you're starving to that then yeah you can do it it is going to work it is going to warm it up but it because of the modify shine wave it's not going to be like a, a steady amount of power that's you know perfectly nice waves so that uh, your stuff works properly so things that won't care about modify shine wave uh, are going to be like little motors and stuff uh, lights doesn't care about it like you know it might 
flicker a little bit but usually it's so fast that you won't notice uh, now if you would take a movie uh, on the screen you probably would notice more that the light is flickering that if you would uh, you would have it just plugged into the wall uh, but other than that like you can run like lots of little thing like this and if your your toaster was gonna work too no problem I mean, just electronic that uh, might be a you know not as good to to run with it it shouldn't do no damage but let's say you're watching tv for example well if you're using a MiFi shine wave then you might see a line going across your your screen once in a while i notice a little bit of that because of experience because i'm using a MiFi shine wave as an inverter on the camper that we have off grid and uh, so if we want to watch tv or a movie usually i fire up the generator i uh, get the you know uh, on the generator that actually have pure shine wave i have inverter with it that have pure shine so this one runs everything perfect but if i switch over to my solar system with the battery that have the modify shine wave inverter in it then i see lines in the tv now the lines in the sound like it's not going to be bad but it won't be as good as a pure shine inverter so that's something to keep in mind there uh, it won't be perfect it's gonna get you out of a jam on a power outage give you a little bit of power so you can charge your stuff uh, this is great for what I'm doing because then it can for the fish room it can run all the filters uh, you can watch the video when I test, tested the 800 watt inverter running the fish room so you know got like heaters and all the tank uh, most of them are 100 watt 300 watt so you know I don't need to run those all the time so and they're not going to all fire up at the same time too so those devices are perfect for what I'm doing and especially for me it's to get the water movement to oxygen the water so that the fish have oxygen to breed so this is the main thing running air pumps running uh, so running air pumps running filters and all this uh, it's great for this now I really wish like that uh, YOB comes up soon with a pure shine inverter. Now of course if you go pure shine and this is why usually people go like manufacture do modify shine wave uh, it's because it's way cheaper to build. If you're gonna do pure shine it's way more expensive. Sometimes you can even double the price for the unit. So but you know if for a thousand watt there if Wyobi would make a pure shine wave like I'm sure that people would go for it um, you know especially because if you can use pure shine and then you can use your batteries there might go a little bit faster through the batteries but you know if you're somebody at uh, for example you have sleep apnea and then you need to have the mask overnight to help you breathe better uh, this is going to this uh, modify shine wave inverter won't cut it for a machine like that so pure shine this would be like you know portable if you go camping or something like this so that would be a super big bonus there so yeah hopefully your oil will be listening to that and make one for you guys so this wraps up this video here i'm going to do some tests with those two units this summer and then uh, also this little thing here at the half grid camper that we have up north and um, we'll see what they can do maybe i'll see if i can open the slide of the trailer with this uh, yeah that'd be interesting to know if you're in a jam and you have like no no other power than this uh, could you open and close the slide that'd be a good video right uh, uh, anyway give me a thumbs up if you think that that would be a great uh, great test to do and i'll sure try to do it and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.